All right. God bless each and every one of you. Late night study. Definitely trying to communicate God's truth by his grace. Um, so let's get started. Ultimately, um, earlier I, I, I saw a post, this post right here. I saw this post and uh, by the grace of God, I wanted to expound on some important truths that are going to help us to really retain the truth that God wants us to hold close to our hearts. The Bible talks about in the book of Thessalonians that God desires that we be lovers of the truth because, you know, individuals uh, as far as people of the earth are not lovers of the truth, there is a falling away that manifests, that happens uh, to them because they are not lovers of the truth in the sense that they hold the truth dear and close to their heart and they are exercising what the truth is specifically talking about. So I want to talk about this post here. So this post that you see right here that ultimately communicates something that seems as if we should retain it we should accept it it seems true but there are some specific things that have to be uncovered in order to really benefit from what the word of god says uh, and we have to really ultimately diagnose to to see whether this statement has any validity in it so we're going to examine that <laughs> so by the grace of god Join me as uh, we uncover the truth here. Um, I'm going to start off in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 16. So one of what, what is OK, so what does it say? It's telling us ultimately that I'm no longer looking for the signs of the times. I'm listening for the sound of the trumpet. All right. So that's what it's saying. It's telling us that. So the first half of it is letting us know that hey there's a uh, there there are signs that are supposed to be broadcasting specific messages to us um but we are not going to be looking for those per se we're going to be looking for the ultimate sign which is ultimately the sounding of the trumpet so let's not think that it automatically means that. Let's say that it means something in reference to uh, a, a person is not necessarily um, looking for adulterous type signs because there, there are, there, there's a scripture in Matthew 16 that kind of depicts something that Jesus spoke that we ought to consider uh sometimes we have individuals that will uh idolize signs they will take signs and use them as a type of internal satisfaction rather than using them to point them in the right direction towards the glory of god and so that's something that we have to be careful about so uh, they a person can consider this as uh, when a person is hungry too hungry for signs it couldn't be a sign of adultery as Jesus spoke about here that we're going to read in, in just a second and that could be something that they're referring to that we should stay away from and that we should be ultimately looking for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ and not signs per se and ultimately looking for the return of Jesus that will uh, manifest with the, uh, the, the trump of God, the, the, this trumpet that an archangel will sound or an angel will sound that will ultimately show us that Jesus has returned, that, that, that the, the manifestation of Jesus in the skies is happening. And so let's look at 
uh, chapter 16 of Matthew because we, we want to see clearly in reference to why uh, I wouldn't use this post. I, I wouldn't post this. I wouldn't post this. Um, and there is some things that are pretty dangerous about this post. And when we, we, when we post, we want to be clear. We want to be individuals that know what we are, we are saying as to not uh, confuse uh, the people. So when we're, when we're talking about uh, what Matthew 16 says, Matthew 16, it starts off by saying the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting and, uh, and, tempt, and tempting desired him that he uh, would show them a sign from heaven. So, of course, what that's saying is the Pharisees are coming and they're desiring to tempt Jesus. They're desiring to incriminate Jesus. They're desiring to um, do things uh, to get him in trouble with the law so that he can ultimately uh, be banished and out of the midst of the children of Israel uh, because they are ultimately afraid of him. Uh, and so in verse 2, it says, He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It, um, it will be fair weather, uh, for the sky is red, and in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas, or Jonah. And he left them and departed. So, why are we even reading this? We're reading this because we want to cancel out or, or we want to talk about the fact that Jesus is not against signs per se. He is against signs in reference to the type of uh, of 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 magic, if you will, the, the, he is against the internal elements of man that wants to misuse signs as to draw attention to themselves rather than drawing attention to God. So one of the things that this particular statement is telling us is that there is no need for us to look at signs any longer but the reality is there is a, a a true important imperative need for us to continue to watch and as Jesus also said and pray to watch and pray to look at specific signs uh, because one of the things about signs is that signs are the prophetic timing of God in reference to supernatural signs. So in reference to what I read in Matthew 16, Jesus is telling the Pharisees that they can discern the weather. They can discern the condition or predict the coming weather, the coming rain, the coming snow, the coming um, you know, condition of the skies. They can, they have studied the way the earth operates. They can um, truly uh, um, uh, understand what is happening in the environment, but they cannot discern, and this is what Jesus is saying, they cannot discern the signs of the times. What's so important about the signs of the times? The signs of the times are important specifically for the Pharisees and the Sadducees because they are religious leaders. So they have to understand the signs of the times above or more so than the natural signs of the progression of 
the earth, the, the regular things. They have to understand the spiritual things uh, as well as the natural things. And so the spiritual things are what they are lacking. Jesus, a sign himself, a, one of the, the biggest sign is on the planet before them and they cannot discern that he is amongst them. They, they have no unction, no true unction uh, to, to the degree that they will submit to what and who Jesus is. And so the need for them to comprehend that is absent. And, but he, he's saying it's hypocritical for them to comprehend lower things uh, and not understand and grab hold of the higher things. And so Jesus is saying it's a wicked and adulterous nation that seeks after a sign. So they're seeking after Jesus doing a miracle, a, a miracle as he has done before. He's done miracles in reference to casting out of devils, healing the sick. He's uh, uh, caused the lame to walk, the blind to see. He's caused all manner of miracles to manifest. And they want to manipulate his power as to get him in trouble. But the important thing here is Jesus is exploiting their lack of knowledge and their lack of discernment. And he's trying to draw um, attention to the need for them to actually uh, comprehend the signs. So this post again is saying that I'm no longer looking for the signs of the times. We are always looking for the signs of the times. There is a absolute necessity for us to uh, grab a hold of the scriptures and be what the Bible calls uh, students of prophecy. We, we ought to be students of the prophecies of Jesus because prophecies, especially the prophecies of Jesus, help us to know what time we are in help us to know where within this prophetic timeline we actually are. And so we cannot uh, uh, push away. We cannot uh, blind our eyes. We cannot avoid, ignore the signs of the times. The signs of the times are essential for us to not be deceived in reference to the, the many things that ought to happen prior to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have so many signs that have to happen prior to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ that we can't afford to miss. We, we have the, the, the manifestation of the great falling away that we know that uh, measures of that is manifesting, has manifested now. Uh, we have the Antichrist that must come. We, we have the Antichrist. We have um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the temple that has to be erected. Again, we, we have um, the, the two witnesses, the two witnesses that have to manifest all of these specific things. The Great Tribulation, this is another element that has to manifest prior to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so these things have to manifest and these are things that we are paying attention to, that we are seeing um, progressing um, the one world government. It's, it's just coming to me. The one world government, uh, the, the manifestation of this one world system that the book of Revelations talks about clearly. Uh, chapter 13, 14, they are speaking about these things because these are the things that we have to be prayerful about. We have to understand that these things will manifest and it's not that we are, we are adulterous, you know, because people can use that scripture. Uh, people can use that scripture, the scripture here, and make it seem like people are 
end times crazy, end times hallucinating. Uh, but the reality is there's a poise, there's a love, there's a faith that has to manifest simultaneously with the knowledge of what's actually happen happening and how we adjust according to the progression of these prophetic times, of this prophetic line of events. We are in currently the, the beginning of sorrows, this time period that has been in operation for 2,000 years now. Ever since Jesus left the earth, things have been happening on the planet that have been demonstrating the current timing of what and where we are. Uh, and so we are not adulterers. I, I do want to say that G Jesus is rebuking those that have hearts not for God, but for simple things, for things that are not in relation to the, the, the new kingdom, new Jerusalem, eternal life, uh, the, 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 the life that is to come ultimately, um, heavenly places, as it tells us in, a, in, in the first chapter of Ephesians. Um, so uh, there, there is a need for us to maintain our diligence in being vigilant in reference to what God is, let's look at some more scripture. Let's look at some more scripture because there's scripture all day that's going to help us. So, so the danger of this particular post, the danger of this particular post is there is a blindness that it can forge. It's a blindness that it can forge and cause people to be unprepared for the mass carnage and chaos that is going to manifest. But we don't cower in fear because of all that. We understand that God is preparing us and we ought to not have the spirit of the world, the spirit of the world and the, the fear, the spirit of fear like the world has because uh, God has not given us ultimately the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So a sound mind in the midst of this chaos, a sound mind in the midst of the destruction, a sound mind in the midst of death. And so Jesus tells us that he gives us this peace, this peace that surpasses all understanding, that is able to guard, protect, secure, um, hold together our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so this supernatural peace, God, we have to position ourselves for this level of, of dominion through that power. We have to allow that to manifest and position ourselves for that to manifest. And so we can look at another scripture um, so we can understand that we have to rightly divide the word of truth and be careful when we post specific things. We have to be careful because if we post things that are not in line with God and we have a whole bunch of likes, you know, on our posts, this can definitely hinder the people of God from being prepared as Jesus uh, is warning us we should be. So let's look at the book of Let's look at the book of 2 Thessalonians. We can go there. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, uh, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, nor be troubled. I'm emphasizing these words neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who is that? The Antichrist. So, 
there are specific signs that have to manifest before the return of the king, before the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Paul is telling us here not to fear, not to be afraid, not to be shaken in mind, not to be troubled, to understand that there are specific signs that you have to look for prior to the coming in the in these last days in, in these uh, these latter days there are specific things that are manifesting um w w of course it's saying here there's the falling away first uh we have the the antichrist manifesting in the book of um zechariah we we know it talks about the two witnesses and in the book of revelations we know it also talks about the two witnesses and their their manifestation their short reign on the planet um prior to the coming of the lord jesus um and um their ultimate death but then ascension to god uh and then uh of course the antichrist you know later on in the same chapter it talks about jesus coming back and destroying the antichrist with the brightness of his coming and with the sword of his mouth it's it's talking about specific events that we are looking forward to and not like the world cowering and cowering in fear when we see the manifestation of them there is a courage that god wants to strengthen us with as we pursue him as we love him as we spend time in him as we spend time with people who are like-minded who love jesus um the, the, as we do these things, there is a emboldening, a strengthening in us so that we can ultimately uh, produce what we ought to produce and be who we ought to be in Christ Jesus. And, and so we, we so so this post is a post. As I was saying earlier, I would not post. I would not post that. We, we want to be careful in what we receive as far as what other people post as well I, I i'm just wanting to warn you guys because there is a lot of things that are being post especially in this in these times these times where people can begin to be unstable because of the multitude of things that are happening all around them we want to be careful what we like what we share what we uh, repost and all that we want to be careful because these things at times can be seeded from fear and we want to ultimately please god in our actions and so god is trying to strengthen us and help us to retain the knowledge that is pure that is undefiled that is uh, manifesting as we speak uh, Jesus said clearly that um, he is coming quickly and his reward is with him to give every man and woman according to his or work his or her work shall be he is the alpha and the omega the beginning and the ending the first and the in the last uh, it, it goes into saying uh, blessed are they ultimately that do his commandments for they shall uh, be given right they will have right to to partake of uh, of the of the the good things of God of the, of the tree of, of the good thing good things of God and they will ultimately enter in through the gates into the city Let, let's go to that verse I think it was something that I was missing um verses given uh, commandments yes they will be, right they will have right to the tree of life amen they will have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city and so god wants us to be individuals that have our life our life in position to have the right to stand before him um it is appointed unto every man and woman wants to die and after this is the judgment and so god ultimately will judge us and 
put us in position to obtain the eternal reward that we have ultimately uh, gathered, up, gathered up, mustered up through the actions of our lives. The, the Bible talks about the fact that there are, uh, uh, we will be given uh, a reward based on the things that we have done in our earthly bodies, these earthen vessels. And so God wants to, to purify you and strengthen you in reference to the true identity that you were born to manifest. And so that is the truth. And this post is not the truth un un unless... There's ways that I guess we can make it okay, but ultimately we, we want to be sound. We want to be sound. We don't want to um, communicate things that are not of his will and nature. And so um, it says, yes, but, but I do want to affirm the fact that, yes, we are looking forward to the listening of the trumpet we we want to hear the trumpet we we want to hear we we like the return of the lord jesus christ matter of fact let's turn there real quick um and i'm going to end with this in matthew 24 i'm going to end with matthew 24 we're looking for the return of the lord jesus christ we love the return the return is what we want but we cannot manipulate our 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 way around the the events leading up to the actual return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says in verse uh, 29, immediately after the tribulations of the, the tribulation of those days, what tribulation? The great tribulation shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. Wow. The sign of the son of man in heaven. Yes. Yeah, so we're looking forward to a sign. We're looking forward to the final sign uh, in a sense. It, that's not the final, final sign to the regeneration of the earth, but it is a monumental sign that we are looking forward to the sign of the son of man in heaven jesus the sign of jesus hovering in the skies hovering in in before our eyes hovering there with his angels with his army there with him we we, we are looking forward to that sign the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the, uh, the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So we're going to have two people mourning in that day. Two people, mourn, two types of people mourning. The people that are waiting on the Lord Jesus Christ in humility, in love, in faith. They're going to be mourning in, in, in total satisfaction. Mourning, uh, crying with satisfaction. Crying with with love, crying uh, tears of faith. Th those that uh, have not known the Lord Jesus Christ, they will ultimately be crying uh, because of uh, the unbelief that was made naked before them. The unbelief that ultimately now is something they cannot retain anymore. Uh, this, this unbelief that is now an enemy to them in a sense that has betrayed them that has deceived them so 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 yes so he gathers his elect from the earth he gathers his people from the earth all of all tribes of all nationalities he gathers these people and he brings them up with him with the aid of angels that are ultimately doing that. Uh, and he uh, ultimately then, of course, we can talk about that in a future video, um, what happens afterwards. But uh, we, what, we're talk, but what we're talking about is, yes, we're looking forward to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking forward to that, looking forward to the hearing of the trumpet. And in that, there is 
a transition in the things that are to manifest on earth. It's a transition. So there is the, this sign that we're looking forward to that will aid us in the transition of what time we are in the earth. So this sign. So we're looking for the sign of the Son of Man that will come and usher in this transition in time. And so like he transitioned the Old Testament to the New Testament, he will transition this time, this beginning of sorrows to the millennial reign. The millennial reign, that this thousand year reign will manifest as Jesus transitions it from the state of this beginning of sorrows, or we can say from this state of the great tribulation. I would say the great tribulation is the end of the beginning of sorrows. And then we have uh, the transition into the millennial reign, the thousand year reign of, of, the, of the Lord Jesus Christ in Jerusalem. And then from there, after that, there is the, uh, the ultimate regeneration of the earth as the, the father cleanses it from the skies with fire uh, against his enemies and, and Satan. And then from there, we have the ultimate culmination of all things, the new Jerusalem coming, the Father's house coming from heavenly places onto the earth, um, uh, onto this cleanse, this renewed earth, uh, which is going to be magnificent, which is going to be magnifical in the name of Jesus. So that's it for tonight in Jesus name. So we, we want to walk by faith and not by sight we want to allow the lord jesus christ to lead us in our our, our paying attention to prophecy paying attention to the signs of the times paying attention to transitions things that are happening that are confirming that's because we, we want to we want confirmation we need confirmation. These signs are not, we're not talking about uh, people that are adulterous in heart, that are just looking for entertainment, that are just looking for transitions so that it can be an internal gratification of, of, of just um, their inner desire to be pleased. We're, we're not talking about that. We're talking about internal confirmation of the prophetic moves of God. We're talking about internal confirmation of what God is, has been saying, what he is continually saying, and what he will ultimately say in the end as things become um, positioned to finish. And so God is amazing. And so God loves you. I love you. And I pray that you continue in faith, that you're strong in faith, that you walk by faith and not by sight. And as I always say, feet follows focus. So focus on the Lord Jesus Christ in your feet, my feet, our feet will follow in Jesus name. Love you.